y'all. Hi guys, welcome back, and uh, here we are, and this is what we're getting into, and uh, got a fast track switch here, and uh, today's our thing about STEM was going to be wiring up the switch. So what I have here is just a uh, fast track 060 switch, alright, and we'll be going over this, and the one thing before I start any wiring is I hear a lot of people online in various chat rooms and everything ask, uh, you know, should I power my switches or just take them off a of track power? I mean, I would always tell you if you're able to, put them on their own power. You want to take as much off of your track power as possible so you're only powering your engine. You don't want any extra draws. It's also added problems that can develop. You know, it's another electrical device. But if you, uh, so I'm going to show you how to power this separately, as well as to set it up for command control. Because, um, and now with this, does anybody ask any questions, Mike, or are we going all right? On uh, the train free gas, if that was a unit you shall swap last night. Yes, the uh, E7s, uh, the congressional that's running, that is. Uh, that is the unit that I did switch the shells on. It's the trailing A unit, and uh, it's been uh, doing pretty good, and I was uh, very happy with that. And um, so first off is the controls, and what comes with, say, a fast track switch, you see those levered things? Well, I take all mine off because I wire for command control. And uh, all it is is telephone wire, so that's what you can buy to hook up for control is just telephone wire and I believe you only need 12 volts off the top of my head for uh, switches to work so you don't need full track voltage anyways which means you can regulate it down and then you have less of a chance of blowing something out by having a track voltage too high which you can on on switches different accessories and stuff that doesn't always want 18 volts like track power free, uh, does all the time but I have my uh, wire strippers here, as you can see. These are my small ones to be of these uh, telephone wires, 22 gauge. So with this, what we're first going to do here is I'm just cutting this end off. That's an old one. Drop my tape. So we got to strip the outer side off. There you go. And down inside, you have four different wires. As you can see there, make sure my shirt's not blocking the red one. And you got a green one, a yellow one, a red one, and a black one. So it's easy to know on the other side what you're hooking up. Now, for wiring fast track switches, all you need is um, you need three for control. You need I always make black my common ground, and that's ground, and green is through or straight, and your and I use red is the other one is through uh, the turnout to make it switch, okay? And then the yellow one, I don't use at this point. You can, you'll use the yellow one if you're using the lever, so the lever lights up and those lights work, and that's what that's for. But I always cut this off just to keep it out of the way. And something I guess I should have mentioned here is down here and inside where the wires are all going to go, all right, this is the side where power goes. And you can see, yep, right there. It says track jumper and over to the positive of the power for positive and ground. 
and I pull out, there's a little metal thing, looks like almost like a staple, a U that goes in there, and I pull that out because it takes it off of track power. And then I'm going to end up connecting just my power wires in here to send power to the switch motor, because in here are two circuit boards which control the switch motor that is mounted about here, and it, it, it has a drive shaft that spins gears that flip the switch back over here, and plus you have the circuits that control the non-derailing features on the fast track switch. So there's, uh, this is all chock-a-block full of electronics in here, and we'll do an open up on one of those at uh, another time. But, so first off, here you can see this one says through, this says ground, and this says out, and then that's the uh, RSC lighting that I was mentioning for the controls. So we're only going to be using these three here, through, ground, and out, is throwing the switch. So, again, this is 22 gauge, so you can see up here, 22 gauge. Did that focus in, Mike? Yeah. Okay. So, you just get it in the right little hole. And you don't need a lot. You don't need to strip an inch of this out. This isn't very big at all. And what it's going into isn't huge. So, and there you go. So, you can see I didn't take a whole lot off of that. You don't need a ton. These are pretty small connections, and there's the red one, and now I'm going to do the uh, black, but I made a little bit of an uh, error here. I forgot I needed to clip back a little bit, and I'm going to show you why. It's how these sit in here. I'm going to clip the, uh, these down correctly so they lay in there a little better. And because this is the order they go in, this in this order for how I use my colors. And I always keep them the same. And what I'm going to do is since the wire has to come back this way, I'm going to cut this one a little shorter than the green, the black a little shorter, then the red even shorter. So... And that was just through trial and error, and now I'm just doing the ends again that I figured out those guys. And yeah. So, let me loosen the screws. I hope anybody who had to deal with Laura is doing well. If anybody had any family and friends, I hope everybody's uh, survived through there and uh, dealing with that. I know, uh, Jason, you're down that way. I know it went up over you. Is it still a hurricane when it got to you? What's up, Grandpa Rouse? And Human City, how you doing, buddy? So, I'm going to put, you know what, I need to trim that just a little bit more. Right. Okay, and yeah, we get a couple of those here <laughs> a year. Okay, you can see up in there, uh, let's see, you can see where they went into the little slots, they're standard mini little electrical uh, connections, and that little screw up there you'll just tighten down on to uh, hold those in place, which I haven't done yet, we have shown you guys there, Hold on, this can be a little difficult for me. And I'm just 
small screwdriver can be real tough on you. Thank you for bearing with me. And, um, okay. So now you can see they're all secure in there. And that's how that's going to come out of there. And then I just pulled another piece of scrap wire. I want you guys just to see the connections. And uh, how I end up feeding those in. But the same way before I used speaker wire. I use 18 gauge speaker wire for uh, my accessories. And of course, when this stuff's on camera, I do not want to. Come apart at all. Right? You're going to just be a nudge, aren't you? But. Okay. And then you're going to strip this the same way. Yeah. So. You don't need a lot on either one. These connections aren't gigantic dealing with this, so you see you didn't need a lot. I always uh, twist my ends trying to make this so the little lines uh, don't spread out on you being a braided wire but using braided wire it has less chance of cracking if you have to move it a lot and uh, fishing it through different things and that's like part of the advantages of uh, a braided wire and let's see so the same basic way these ones go in as did the other way. So, you guys can see I have one in and I have the copper one I always use as my hot and I have that into, uh, what does that say there? Oxen. Oxen. So I know I always use that as my hot. So I'm going to secure that one right now. you can see my powers in so then here what you can do sometimes this stuff's hard to manipulate when you're trying to do the camera right I've seen a whole bunch of you guys do that <laughs> these little tabs they have under here, like this, hold the wires in place nice, you drill your holes and drop them right down. Okay, and that, that's the basic wiring of a fast track switch, because now then I just take this back to my uh, terminal block that I have for my switches with a transformer on it. You know, I just, I believe I showed you guys, I had just bought one of those, uh, uh, little line owl uh, auxiliary transformers and I think it only you know it goes up to 18 but like I said for this it's only set at 12 to like run the switches and I uh, have that took terminal block and I have one on each side of the layout because I was trying to run the didn't want to do as 
a lot of 30 foot runs so that's why I have split boards I was trying to cut down on that type of stuff a little and um, so that's the basic of that and then this portion here okay this portion what you do here is this is where you can break to make your electrical isolation there to put off your siding or wherever to make an electrical break these sections come with built in where you just pull this wire and you can see there the middle rail already has a gap so you create a, an easy electrically isolated area and then do you guys know that this can all come off and move that you can swap the turnout sides and uh, I never knew that right off the bat. It wasn't until later when I was trying to get stuff to fit that sometimes I had to move these guys. And you can, and they come all right off. You just take this off here, and you can swap them. Is it, uh, I guess I could do that. Can you ask, uh, do you guys want to, do you guys want to see me swap that end out? Or is that, uh, well, some of you guys, I'm sure, actually do it. No, Yeah. Right, in three rail, we're all AC, and uh, so the wiring for this, you know, the, uh, the this is powered off of AC the same way the rail, uh, the rails are. Oh, okay, yeah. So um, with this, and I'll uh, go ahead and I'll move that turnout, and uh, there is a little trick to it sometimes with uh, one of the for the pole position uh, kind of thing to get the lantern to turn but um so you have that now these are what we're going to remove I'm going to remove this side first and you guys can AC? Yeah, they're all AC. Maybe I'm misunderstanding the question. Because we use, in, in three rail, we don't use DCC, we use DCS. So it traveled a little differently. Because of the alternating uh, sine wave involved in three rail. Hold on, I was just trying to move this a little bit. There it is. And the screw. Decided to bring this little thing over here so I don't lose some of these little screws. The digital signal um, in Lionel's case goes out solely through common ground and it travels on the outer rail of the lab and then each locomotive has an antenna on it and it picks it up directly from the outer common rail because the, the, the middle rail is, the, is uh, the hot rail. And each locomotive has a built-in antenna and each type of locomotive, it's in different places and, and, and it changes, it's not all the same. And uh, MTH functions similarly, but MTH uses, it, it talks back and forth and uses the uh, hot rail as rail because the locomotives send information back and diagnostics and everything to the TIU, whereas uh, Lionel doesn't do that. And MTH engines talk back and forth. So that's why you have to run your, uh, your positive and your ground through each channel on the TIU for the system for that to be able to talk, whereas Lionel's legacy or TMCC is the same, is it only attaches through your common ground. And that's the difference in that one. So there's a part off, and I'll show you here. So there you go, you can see where the side of the roadbed's gone. So I'm gonna take off these two for this one to move over there and we'll flip that back. Did that answer the question? Was that cool for your question, or let me know if, uh... 
Yeah. We're three rail. We got to be different. Always a little different. And so this, okay. So in here is this little device. This is the little LED that lights up under the lantern, which I take off so I don't lose it. Because uh, you can lose those. And you can see it uh, spin when I pull this lever. Because this seats in into an area in the arm. When the switch flips, it moves this as well and causes the, uh, the lamp to shift. So just like... Uh, when it's going and you can see and there's the electrical connections it touches on uh, when I pull that up you'll see them to give power to that lamp and this guy needs moved to the other side and I'll deal with him in a second but you can see here there are those uh, copper contact points so either side you put the turnout on it will uh, be able to get connection so that the lantern lights up. So we wanted to shift it to this side. Okay. Now this is the one kind of tricky thing with this is getting this bad boy back on here. And this. got to do something. You got to get here. You can see here's the uh, mechanism that turns the lantern. So you have to have that extended all the way out and you need to have this pulled out so they can uh, seat onto each other. Yes. Oh, a bit. <laughs> and it's like I think the op that's like the opposite side of the stage. Okay, you just gotta get this little thing lined up here. There it goes. So. Right? So that's moving and I gotta put screws in, but there's this little guy there. And I need to get into this little itty bitty spot. And he goes in another little hole. Okay. 
Thank you, D. Klinger. How's that walk to Spanish class going? in the position there. It goes in a little hole here and a little hole on that side and it works with switching the lantern. It deals with that mechanism as well. So, now I'm going to put this guy back on. screwed on because I'll pick it up and it'll fall apart. Nah. Okay. And this guy goes back on this side. Can you guys hear the trains in the background? I'm finishing getting these guys screwed together here. Okay. So you can see I got all my screws put back in. So everything's secure, and we moved it to the other side, and we're functioning that way, and so that's how you switch the turnout on like that on a fast track switch, because sometimes you need that for fitting together or however you want it. So they made each switch can do that. So once you do a couple, it gets really easy when you're uh, working on them. And uh, there's some stuff you can work on in here. Uh, I fried things, but I had problems when I had them on track power and would uh, back feed or something like that. And I had problems with circuit boards before, but I blame that on me that I shouldn't have been doing what I was doing anyway. And you know, you can blow up engines that way, even cross feeding some stuff incorrectly. But um, so then all you would do is. This goes, the power's easy, and then this end of the wire would go down to uh, the AIU in my case for a uh, SC1 or an SC2 in line out, and that's in their uh, TMCC original stuff, and then in the LCS system, they have a switch, uh, a switch machine controller that'll do four switches and um, you still need to have the basic it's the same three wires you got to tell it to go straight you got to tell it to turn there you go you know and then in programming it's kind of like programming an engine you go in you acknowledge where the switch is which connector it is you label it you know and you give it a thing and you know where it is and it's the same type of like on the um, the, the, the line out equipment or on a uh, MTH AIU, which is the accessory interface unit, which has 10 switch ports and 10 accessory ports, has the same small little uh, electrical connections as these guys back here. Whereas you just feed those three wires back in, and you know, it'll go through, and you can, you know, and you're gonna practice. And then at the same time, though, you don't need a lot of wire sticking out there at all. It's, uh, they're not huge connections, and you don't need all that extra wire because it can touch something else and short out. You only need to take a little bit off of there. 
and a switch port has the same three things, and I always, it's always, uh, most of the time I've ever seen, it's ground in the middle, and then you have uh, straight and out, or through and out. And uh, you just put that in there, and then it's a matter of just programming it into your system. And that's, you know, and you got to make sure your wires are long enough. Don't pre-cut your wires till you, you know, and everything like that. But you got to think about that. I didn't do that at first, too, and shortchanged myself many times. But that's the basic stuff with the switch. Does anybody have any questions concerning the switch? And anything with that before we move along to the next portion of STEM? switch that was out and uh, did that but I tell you what I have another one that'll be arriving that's going in down here and I'm going to be putting that in so you'll actually see me then we'll do that another one when I run some wires all the way back over that way but I was uh, really more wanting to show how to deal with it on the switch uh, right now and I just didn't have one ready to go on the layout but I will in the next little bit dealing with that but I'm going to move you guys, and I mean that as I got to move the camera, because what we're going to do is, uh, I'm not sure if Harvey's still here, um, the, one of the programs I've talked about before, it's on my laptop, the E-Train Command Console, uh, Harvey uh, designed that program and it's his and I bought it several years ago and I've started to get into it. I do and it controls through the Lionel system and it's uh, pretty darn neat but I got to move the camera here to get you guys set up over where that laptop's going to be and of course this guy came right by didn't he? Uh, and Yeah. 